we didn't try the talk before, so we don't know where <laughs> the, the other one. But, so when the silence came up, you all turned and faced the other one. Uh, what's my brief? That's the most important thing. Uh, does everyone here know Madrid and this talk has no sense at all? Well, that's yeah. the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you already know, then please be quiet and maybe you can go outside and take a coffee or something. Okay. Madrid is a meta model for the script adaptive models. That is uh, something like, uh, as Lucas says, usually causes meta confusion because uh, you don't know when you are actually describing a model or describing Madrid itself. But it is used uh, to uh, describe domain object models in a common way so you can uh, uh, friend, uh, interpret that, uh, that objects in different, uh, different uh, behaviors. Sorry, my English is not going so well today. That's why he is one, the one who should be talking, but he, don't, he doesn't want. So, <laughs> sorry. You do your job. I don't know. Uh, anyway, the purpose of this slide is to let you know that uh, you can render Madrid, uh, objects using Madrid in different behaviors, all completely different. Uh, you can interpret and use that descriptions to uh, <coughs> produce a lot of different uh, things, behaviors in your program, and it's very useful and it's very uh, uh, time uh, session. Hmm? You say time. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have a lot of translators. So I think, I think the key thing here is that it can be re realized really easily in Seaside, Morphic, and Esteban has written some very cool Cocoa Touch um, with this as well. Now, when, um, when Lucas originally did his presentation, um, he put up this slide, so describe once, get everywhere, and here are all the, some, of the, some of the things um, you can get out of Magritte or use Magritte for. In today's talk, we're going to be focusing on um, the best effect error. <laughs> uh, building viewers, um, customizing, customizing viewer look, and also um, object verification and how you can look at objects um, in very different ways. So, if you describe it once, you can. You can render it and a, as a usual form, or you can get it using <coughs> JSON or XML. We're going, to, we're going to be showing some of that later on. <coughs> How does Madrid work? Uh, you have to describe all of the elements that uh, your model is going to be, uh, that your model needs. You have to describe the classes, describe the containers of the classes, you have the, to describe the attributes and the relationship. Uh, with all of this information, you are some kind of finding a type. Uh, uh, I know we don't like types, but to, uh, to uh, let the interpreter know that you need a string, you need to be able to say this is going to be a string, or this is going to be a number, or anything. So, uh, Magritte uh, provides a set of classes to the student that. Uh, the classes can, describe, can allow you to describe, uh, as I said before, string numbers, dates, and any other uh, primitive type. Also allows us to, to define uh, relationships between them and the kind of relationship you are defining. A one to one, a one to many, and many to many or other. To uh, uh, that object that defines the type, but also you have 
uh, accessors who allows us to define the way in which you are going to uh, modify the objects when the, the interpreter acts. Uh, why is this important? Because uh, so you can uh, write anything uh, as you like uh, without modifying the object model itself. You just uh, uh, write a plugable accessor and you can even touch the insparts directly if you like it. Uh, if you don't want to provide a uh, mutator etc. Okay. Uh, also, to prevent uh, the changes to be propagated before uh, before it is, uh, the that uh, change is submitted, uh, we use uh, Madrid use uh, the concept of memento, which I don't going to explain because if you are here, you know what it is. Okay, so I think we're about to go to our first demo. So what do we do with those descriptions? Ah, but before we do that, we, we, we've, uh, for the purpose of this presentation, we've uh, derived a very simple little model. So imagine a conference booking application. Um, so you have a conference, you have a number of talks, and you have a um, attendee list. That's it. In fact, that's, we thought that example just early after the social events, so that's the most complex model we have. <laughs> Don't expect great things about that. So, with that model, we are going to create some editors and do some complex validations, show, show you how to uh, use. We are going to build you know, some custom uh, interpretation and we are going to show show you how to describe non, how, how we use it to describe non-visual models. That's it. We will read it that, but I have to read it. I have to say it. So to edit to, to edit uh, components in Magrid, we are going to use uh, Magrid Seaside, which is just one possible interpreter for Magrid, but it's the most common now. I think I think one of the the biggest problem with Magrid is that everybody believes that it's for rendering components with Seaside. And it's not at all, but we are going to uh, we are reinforce that <laughs> believing because we are going to use it Magrid Seaside for our, our, our examples. But, okay. Okay. Uh, sorry. A little bit before? No, sorry. Yes. Uh, this uh, as component is the mesan the message you send to uh, any object to get a seaside component. Uh, well, the other two are messages that you need to actually render it. No, no, as component is really important. The other, the other can be used or not. No. Uh, So I, I thought maybe if we just saw the visual model that might uh, um, 
and then we jump into the code that might show what's going on quickly. So here we've got a, this is our conference, so we've got a conference date. Uh, I guess scroll off is the time for something. It's not working. Okay, so Esteban has to keep scrolling down. <laughs> So, oh, it doesn't show, does it? Oh, it doesn't show. Anyway. Name and location. Yeah, okay, so you've got the name and location at the top. Um, and we've got a date, and we've got talks, and you can select the different talks, and then we've got a list of attendees. So let's just um, jump from there into the, into the code.
that was our accidental example in Madrid seaside. But, but as we are saying, with the same description, you can do a lot of things. Uh, there is also Madrid Morph, and you can build your own custom renders. Tomorrow I want to show uh, if I'm on my life for tomorrow. I'm not so sure right now. Uh, I want to show you a custom render for my own framework, which is Reef. Uh, we are going to show now the uh, same component we showed before uh, in Seaside in uh, how you can serialize it, serialize it in Morphic, with, of course, everybody knows because uh, it is used to show uh, to the PR of the browser. I don't know if you use PR, you can edit PR from inside the image using this, this thing. But uh, I have to say that it's more or less broken right now. If you want to use it, it's not going to work. I don't know why, because uh, something more things changes. Uh, 1.0, 1.3, and it's not working. Okay, so then we, then we saw the model being rendered in Morphic. Um, now, now we're going to go and um, just by changing uh, a renderer, you're going to be ho hopefully be able to see a much more kind of web.2.0 web uh, look and feel. So we just flip to that. Um, okay, so... Yeah, so I've got... So from the basic uh, MS conference, I've, uh, I've derived a new class, and the only difference is I've added a description. So this is a description of the container of the, of the rendering model, and I'm saying component renderer, MM, Magrate, Magritte form renderer. So that's, that's something we've developed for the purpose of this presentation. Um, So here we're just going to change it to render the uh, the two version, which is going to bring in our new renderer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. No. Okay. So now it's the same the same form, but rendered using a custom renderer. Um, and as we as we go into each of the fields, we get a little thing. We can scroll down and it gives us a bit of a tooltip, um, and so on. If we if we try and save it now, the, the um, validators are going to run, um, and uh, hopefully it gives you slightly uh, slightly better better look and feel. It's a bit difficult to see on this washed out slide, but that's actually a kind of red a red highlight there. Another cool example of that is one thing that is not working in this port. This is a custom render I made for me, and I'm going to commit to my original repository once I finish it. Uh, it allows you to. Uh, change in, in line things, for example. Mm. So you have to imagine this is a beautiful, beautiful form. Um, and rather than actually, often on modern websites, rather than going to a form view yeah. or something, you actually kind of edit, edit the content in place. Yes. And this is what this is trying to, trying to demonstrate here. Yes, it, it should be a cool form, but it happens that I made it. So <laughs> it's like good. But it works. It, it works changing the whole behavior of the seaside renderer. to have an edit in place editor for each component with all the complexities and validations that Madrid has. In fact, that's the purpose of that example. So, thankfully, we are almost done. <laughs> uh, uh, happens sometimes that uh, 
you, you can't use a custom renderer because your uh, uh, interpret uh, needs to be real complex. The interpretation needs to be real complex. Uh, and usually the answer for that is don't use my grid. Do it with by your own. But in that case, sometimes you are losing a lot of the potential that a grid has and, uh, and you want to use, for example, validations or uh, a mental thing and uh, everything. So one thing uh, I did for uh, another large project is to use the descriptions uh, and not build a render at all. You can use the descriptions and render the content of the description without a component renderer. And that works pretty fine uh, because it's highly dynamic and you still have most of the potential, not all the potential, but uh, most, of it, most of it. That's uh, an idea to use, but it happens that uh, I didn't bring my laptop with me and well, we don't have any demo for that. <laughs> so one other thing, oh. Um, one of the other things you can use the Greek for is uh, generating JSON and XML. Um, I'll quickly demo that. <coughs> so we've, we've used a uh, seaside rest here. To, um, to do the parsing of the RESTful interface. So here we've just got conference name equals ESOG, format equals XML. Um, and there you can see the conference being rendered in um, XML format. Um, and we can go uh, JSON as well. So uh, that's Again, we're using the same model, and all we're doing is just saying as XML, as JSON, and it's and it's creating that for us. So we're, by what we're trying to say is by by using these tools, you get kind of an awful lot of power. Um, it maybe it's a bit more upfront effort, but you can reuse it in lots of different ways. So. <coughs> use Magrid always. Uh, of course, the only solution for that is not using Magrid at all. But there is another uh, serious problem, which is uh, well, a problem, it's a discussion. I always discuss this with Hernan Wilkinson, that's why I, I wanted to say <laughs> is, uh, If you place your descriptions to create forms in the class, sometimes uh, it can be interpreted that you are mixing the uh, view and the model. You are, uh, you are uh, confusing things and it's, it's not a good place, some say, to, to put it there. There is a discussion where, where to place it. So there is another problem with that. If the descriptions are in the class side of the object, of the domain object, uh, yeah, it is not dynamic. It's really difficult to change it in runtime. So what you do in that time is uh, put some part in the class side and some other in, the, in your CSI components or in, the, uh, in, in your code and in some place. So Lucas posted something to the Magritte mailing list talking about some of the issues with the current current implementation and how we might work around it. So one of the issues was uh, if you've got a group description, use description to generate uh, the container, the description container. And clearly that from time to time gives you a, a name collision. Um, uh, yeah, and, and as Esteban said, uh, dynamic descriptions are really hard. So he has got a solution. The first one, rename description from the group description and to move the descriptions to the instance side and use um, fragments to uh, 
decorate the, the Magritte descriptions on the instant side. Um, yeah, further information. Question, no question, because we are out of time, and then if you have any question, ask Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.